You know, everybody's working at top speed these days. The times demand the best we've got. And the best, when it comes to coffee, is measured in terms of flavor. The demands we place upon coffee today are greater than ever before. Every cup must measure up. Every sip must hit the spot. Now, not only to fill its all-important place as part of a good meal, but for the boost fine coffee gives, the lift to help you get things done. And besides that, since the shortage makes rationing necessary, each cup should make up in excellence for the cups we don't get in between. Now, to fill the bill and more than fill it, get Chase and Sanborn coffee. You'll marvel at a single cup. Coffee is undeniably a favorite drink amongst Americans throughout history. According to a recent survey on coffee consumption in America, three out of every four Americans consume coffee on a daily basis. Additionally, coffee, only second to water, is the most consumed beverage in America. This black magic has provided Americans with superpowers giving strength for soldiers on the battlefield, providing energy to build and create, and an opportunity to access a part of their creative souls while high on caffeine. It is easily available on every grocery store shelf, found in practically every home in America, and served hot and ready at any gas station, restaurant, airport, you name it. But how did we get here? How did Americans become obsessed with coffee? And how did it become so easily available? In this video, we will learn how coffee has evolved from a luxury item almost served exclusively by the privileged into an affordable everyday custom for Americans across the nation by the early 1900s. This also includes the evolution of coffee in the massive industry that grew around it, and how this dark, stimulating beverage became incorporated into the very fabric of America. But before before we start our adventure, let me pour you a cup of coffee, brewed myself. I have cream sugar, a cigarette if you'd like. Help yourself. Now that we both have our coffee, let's get started, shall we? Mm. Yes, there's an air of the that's full-bodied, refreshing hot coffee makes any time a pleasant interlude. How did coffee become the preferred beverage for Americans? To answer that question, we'll have to go back in time to visit the 13 colonies. When settlers made their journey to the New World, they brought with them some essentials, such as bread, wine, olive oil, meats, tea, and even coffee. During colonial times, coffee was more for the privileged, as it required more effort and equipment to prepare. Unlike tea, it needed to be roasted and grounded before brewing. Though coffee houses rapidly began to appear in the 13 colonies, tea continued to be the favored drink in the New World. This all changed in 1773. People in the colonies were growing angry due to the heavy tax on tea imposed by King George III. This resulted in a revolt known as the Boston Tea Party. According to History.com, on December 16, 1773, the Sons of Liberty, a group of merchants and tradesmen founded to protest the British taxation, disguised themselves as Native Americans, boarded docked ships, and threw 342 chests of tea, an amount worth about a million dollars today, into the Boston Harbor in direct opposition to the tea tax. This event would forever change America's drinking preference from tea to coffee. Drinking tea became unpatriotic. America was now coffee drinkers. Founding father and later third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, proudly proclaimed that coffee is the favorite drink of the civilized world. From here on out, coffee grew to become an iconic symbol of American culture, vigor, and spirit.
As mentioned previously, before the 1900s and especially during colonial times, it was mostly privileged people who enjoyed a fresh cup of coffee. This delicious beverage was considered a luxury. Coffee required patience as it involved more labor and special tools to prepare compared to tea. Despite this, coffee was appearing more rapidly in America. So what was it actually like to buy and prepare coffee during this time period, before it was easily available to the public? Well, first, you had to acquire some coffee beans. Now remember, coffee didn't come pre-roasted. You would only be able to find the raw green beans. There was various ways you can get your hands on some of these fresh green beans. According to ushistoryscene.com, coffee was available and affordable through the Atlantic trade. You could purchase beans from your local market, mail order, which was very popular, and lastly, you could commonly find them sold via a street vendor. Eventually, during the 1700s, coffee was introduced and harvested in the Caribbean, the Guineans, and Brazil by the British, making it easier to import freshly harvested coffee beans from Central and South America. Here is the cost of coffee from two different time periods compared to other common goods to give you an idea. As you may notice, coffee really wasn't that expensive. Step number two. So you've got your fresh coffee beans on hand. Now what? Well, they're not looking like coffee just yet. We've got to roast those precious beans. Large local roasting facilities were appearing across the nation and common by the mid-1800s. These roasting facilities used a large cylinder roaster with a crank that kept the beans rotating in constant motion. These roasting contraptions were invented by the French, Dutch, and Italians, and eventually made its journey across the Atlantic to the American colonies, where it was used for hundreds of years. Even though these services were offered during the 17 and 1800s, the most popular way people roasted coffee was at home. When it came to roasting coffee at home, many people used such simple methods as placing a layer of beans on a metal sheet and placing it in the oven, or stirring the beans in a cast iron skillet over fire. Eventually, appliances catering to the home roaster were developed. For instance, in 1849, a spherical coffee roaster was invented in Cincinnati, Ohio that fitted into a burner opening. Step number three. Okay, now those beans are looking more like coffee, but they aren't ready to be brewed into a delicious cup of joe just yet. Yes, you guessed it. It's time to ground those roasted beans. Originally, people in the 1400s used what they had at home to grind up their beans. A manual spice grinder or grain mill seemed to get the job done. But eventually, in the late 1600s, coffee mills were invented and made available to the public. They looked like this. You'd place your coffee beans in the top, spin the lever, and the fine grounded coffee would be deposited in the bottom drawer. Step number four. If you have stuck with me for this long journey, it's finally time to brew our coffee. In just moments, that brown, delicious, stimulating coffee will be filling our cups. The most common way people brewed their coffee was in a pot over heat. A great example of how coffee was brewed prior to the 1900s is in Cowboy Kent Rowling's video titled How to Make Cowboy Coffee. I recommend checking it out as it is very similar to how coffee was made in America for centuries. And right, let's get us some cowboy coffee started. They would boil both the coffee and water together. This method of brewing would often leave the coffee tasting very bitter. There were not many advancements made with the brewing method until the late 18 and 1900s. Despite coffee's lengthy preparation, coffee was indeed growing in popularity across the United States. Its demand especially grew during the Civil War in the mid-1800s, as it was an essential stimulant for soldiers in battle. Business-savvy entrepreneurs saw this growth in demand and jumped on the opportunity to spread the joy of coffee from sea to shining sea.
Besides some teas available, coffee gave people a kick of caffeine that powered them throughout the day, and people were craving more. Eventually, their prayers were answered via the Industrial Revolution, which roughly spanned from the 17th and 19th century in America. The Industrial Revolution centered around two major components. For starters, it made the production of goods much quicker. Instead of making everything by hand, machines, often powered by water mills and later steam, did a lot of the heavy lifting on its own. And lastly, the adoption of the factory system made everything efficient. This meant more could be made in a little amount of time. So where does coffee come into play? Well, remember all those tedious steps we covered in the last section? Well, powerful, massive machines were invented over time that were able to perform these tasks with large amounts of coffee all at once. Let's start with the roasting machines. Advancements were accomplished, folks, in the mid to late 1800s. Companies could roast hundreds of pounds of coffee at once, something the home pan method could never achieve. From that time, commercially roasted coffee grew in popularity until it gradually overtook home roasting during the 1900s in America. In 1903 and 1906, the first electric roasters were patented in the U.S. and Germany. Companies who had the opportunity to own these big, powerful roasting machines had another big advantage, bulk buying. They could buy large quantities of fresh green coffee beans for cheap. Even the packaging of coffee was making large strides. The popular offering of one pound coffee bags were a hit. This was first introduced by Art Buckle Brothers in Philadelphia, which brought them much success. This concept was mimicked throughout the coffee industry and became the norm. Not too long after this, vacuum packaging became the new standard. Now, any seasoned coffee drinker would know that once coffee is grounded and exposed to the air, it will immediately lose its freshness. Major coffee brands were able to fix this problem via a process known as vacuum packaging. In the year 1900, R.W. Hills of Hills Brother Coffee brand developed an effective process to suck out all the air from their coffee tins, ensuring freshness to all their customers. Coffee tins became an iconic piece of American coffee history. Unfortunately, these fun tins are no longer used, but are a great item to collect. Everybody rich or poor, famous or not, was high on coffee. This huge shift in production changed coffee from a luxury item to an easy and accessible item to have by the early 1900s. Now, it's important to mention that there wasn't much of an emphasis made on quality. It's not like today where local roasters and coffee shops will obsess over the perfect temperature to roast or how long they should be roasting the coffee beans. According to My Alma Coffee, the idea of tasting notes, country of origin, washing process, or even understanding the supply chain and how that influenced taste were wholly separated from the grocery shelves consumers were browsing. In fact, for decades, most people in the United States didn't even know that coffee beans came from a real-life plant. Oh boy. Things were changing and changing quickly. By the 1900s, coffee was a large and in-demand commodity. Tins of conveniently roasted and often pre-grounded coffee was ready and available at everyone's fingertips, and it was cheap. By the 20th century in America, drinking coffee practically became everyone's patriotic duty. A piping hot cup of coffee served an important role in people's lives. This liquid black magic gave Americans superpowers, enabling them to play longer, work harder, and access a part of their creative souls while high on caffeine. 
it was deemed an essential ration for soldiers in battle. When America entered World War I in 1917, the U.S. military snagged as much coffee as possible. One army officer was quoted saying, Coffee was as important as beef and bread. By October 1918, just before the war's end, Uncle Sam was trying to get 37,000 pounds a day of coffee, far above the entire national daily output of 6,000 pounds, according to Mark Pendergast's coffee history from Uncommon Grounds. Same goes for the Second World War. During the onset of World War II, America needed to scavenge up those magical beans to help them win the war. Americans began to ration an assortment of goods for the war effort, such as rubber, gasoline, clothing, sugar, butter, and of course, coffee. In the 1920s, when alcohol was deemed illegal for Americans to consume, the one drug they did have was coffee. While coffee definitely doesn't have the same effect as a stiff shot of gin or a glass of whiskey, coffee was a decent alternative. It was dark, rich, and got the blood flowing for people across America in the Roaring Twenties. With a reasonably low price of only five cents for a cup of coffee, it was practically a steal. All someone needed was a shiny nickel and they had themselves a warm cup of coffee in their hands. Naturally, with America's obsession with and need for their caffeine kick, numerous advancements were made with how people drank their coffee. For instance, coffee filters were invented in 1908 by a woman named Matilda Bentz to create a smoother, more enjoyable taste of brewed coffee. New coffee makers and brewing methods were also offered, such as a Chemex, a French press, an electric percolator, or a vacuum or siphon coffee pot. Instant coffee was also invented and perfected in 1901 by a Japanese scientist, Satori Kato, giving the citizens of America yet an even easier way to make a cup of coffee. I've always liked the good things in life. Good art, good book, good coffee. I make it a new way, by the pot, using instant coffee. Not any instant, this one. Instant Maxwell House. So much richer now, it makes a really good pot of coffee. Only one that has this recipe. Use a heaping teaspoon for each cup. Add water, cold water, and then heat, almost to a boil. And uh, let it steep a while to bring out all its flavor. I do it my way, see? Coffee becoming a large, easy accessible, and cheap commodity in America influenced other strides in the coffee industry, such as the advent of Starbucks that completely transformed the experience and culture of drinking coffee in America when they opened doors in the 1970s. Furthermore, current generations have developed a much more sophisticated appreciation for coffee. As specialty coffee roasteries and coffee shops who focus on the quality and complexities of coffee have recently become very popular across the United States. What was initially influenced by patriotism in the early American colonies and heavily influenced by the Industrial Revolution, Americans have had a long love affair and dependency on coffee. <gasps> oh no! Looks like we're out of coffee. Looks like you drink all yours too. Do we really drink that much? Well, if you stick around, not only will I make you a fresh pot of coffee, but I'll have another exciting adventure for you as well. So be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that like button.